What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. Yes. Oh, and superstar Skiller Baby is here with us today. What's up? What's up with you? I was watching your movie outside. Oh, yeah. I'm a terrible actor. <laughs> you, why do you say that? Don't put yourself down like that. I'm terrible at acting. You, you think so? Get, I don't get paid to act. Well, first of all, people in, apparently people enjoyed it because I saw everybody being like, Skill is in a Tubi movie. So I was like, we got to watch. Outside is called. Mm-mm. You know? So you didn't think, you didn't feel comfortable? No. Did you watch it? I watched it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people hate watching themselves. Yeah, that's like, all they're asking. I, I am hate some hearing people. myself and watching myself. But you listen to your music. You can't hate listening to your music. Uh, like I listen to music. I did like before it come out. Then when it come out, it'd be weird. All right. I mean, I could understand that doing radio. It took me a long time to get comfortable listening to yourself. Yeah, listen. And sometimes I still find that hard to do. But you know. So you don't like watching yourself in 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 this movie we're talking about? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, Isai Wan is in it too. Y'all had the whole every. Was it fun to make at least? No. <laughs> well, why? What was? You really didn't enjoy it, did you? It's real tedious. Like you okay. got too much. Tedious. Yeah. I I had committed to it, and mm-hmm. so I had to finish it. But like, and you were the star. It wasn't just like no yeah, guest like, appearance. They keep taking doing takes over and stuff like that. Yeah. I ain't really like it. Then I was going through. I had got shot during that movie. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's, that's and I still serious. did the movie. You did. Yeah. Oh, this was the outside the studio. Where, yeah, oh like I had got shot, all type of shit. And you still had to do the movie. I ain't had to, but, but you, I had committed myself. You committed to yourself, it. so yeah. you said I'm gonna do what I said I was set out to uh, do. Uh-huh. How did you remember? The, how did you remember lines? Are you easy? You remember things easily? Or yeah. okay, that's half the battle right there. I, c- I couldn't. Yeah, I can't. And you probably lines. could freestyle a little bit too, like. Yeah. Kind of go along like with the flow. A lot of that stuff, they be like corny, so I just be <laughs> <improvising>. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah, you you want to say it how you would say it. Mm-hmm. You know, wow, that's crazy, and that that went viral too. Like that situation outside the studio, uh-huh. I was like, oh my god, skill. But I also feel like, and this also was in the movie outside, which was interesting, right? Because a lot of times when people do things, they pull up like they're filming. Yeah, and so sometimes, um, you know, people film things because I saw another instance. Uh, with you and you talked about this on your live where it was like 30 people and then they tried to jump you uh-huh. and um that went viral everyone that, was talking yeah. about that uh-huh. yeah that went viral do you feel like now because you've been doing music now for how long like five years yeah about five years five, six years yeah. has it made it like you're more of a people trying to have a moment and you got to be more careful how you move no i be i do got to be more careful how i move i just be trying to like stay normal so I don't be getting security like especially like at home I just like like I like that the people can touch me and I can be normal so I just be still doing that but like my whole city really love me it just be certain people probably don't but Mm -hmm. you know so I don't be tripping about that like yeah after that situation did you decide are you doing you having security now sometimes or just sometimes but I just I I I figure like I'm going to just give the city a break for a minute because I be trying to be a hood rat too much. Like, I just be <laughs> going to everything by myself, being in the middle of the hood. I just. Yeah, you can't chill do that. that. You can't do that anymore. Because I think there's a lot at stake. And, and like I said, people do try to have a moment. Mm-hmm. Like, people will be like, phones out. All I heard was, like, skill again, jump. He getting jump. Yeah. Then- yeah. I like, like that situation. Like, they, you, you would think, like, like somebody would try to be embarrass me or something, but I'm not easily embarrassed. So it'd be like somebody would come out, try to have a moment with their phone out. All right, boom, this killer. We about to try to act like he like he he ain't no gangster nothing, which I'm not. But like I ain't just no curse. So it just be like mm-hmm. you could try to have your moment, but certain stuff I just don't be going for. Right. But I don't condone like violence or. I don't condone no gangster stuff around kids, so I ain't want to do that. That was kind of the only embarrassing thing about it was I was around all those kids. Right, right. and there were women around, too. Yeah, women. They were like, like the women was going hard, too. They was like, look, y'all ain't going to mess with, with Skilla. Yeah, yeah, they love me at home, but that, it just be yeah. like all them kids and women around. I don't do gangster yeah. stuff around kids. Like, I don't condone that or women. I don't do that, like. And, you know, the women do love you. And I think that is also uh, a very evident in the music that you make, too. Like the song Bay that's out right now. Uh-huh. I see the girls are going crazy over that. Yeah. You know, but some people would say Skilla really makes music for the ladies. Is that intentional? 
That song was intentional. Mm-hmm. Like everything else, like, it wasn't intentional. Like Gorgeous, that song with you and T Grizzly. Yeah. That's definitely, you know, mm-hmm. for the women. The song with Dusty Or. Yeah. That you and Rob 49 are on also. That's definitely for the ladies. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so part of that song is if you ain't trying to turn her up, then leave her alone. Mm-hmm. Are there times when you didn't talk to a woman because you felt like you didn't have the finances to be able to turn her up? When I, when I, when I had like the finances to turn somebody up, I just had this one thing in mind. So it just be like, I wasn't really thinking about that. When you don't got it, you don't be like, I ain't trying to be in no committed relationship or be like bothering nobody every day if I don't. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need that, don't even turn me on, like being like broke. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be around <laughs> nobody. When I'm broke. I don't know. Being broke probably don't turn nobody on. <laughs> no, like, I don't want to be around nobody when I'm broke. I right. want to go get some money. So, I don't know. I'm kind of different. So, you can't even date somebody because you're too busy trying to handle what you need to handle and you can't think about dating. Which I think everybody should, though. <laughs> Well, some people would say, like, you wouldn't want a woman to want you because of your money. Like, would it mean something to you if you were with a woman and she was holding you down at a I time when you was working? That type on? of stuff become a distraction. Like, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people blinded by love or whatever they feel, like, they feelings. I don't really be emotional about that type of stuff. Like, I don't really, I ain't had that yet, so I don't know. Okay. I don't you really haven't been in love be yet, like is what you're saying. Uh-uh. Okay, but you like to trick on the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> well, he laughing like he don't, he don't rap about it. Chanel bags. And... He going to get you some stuff, though. Yeah. <laughs> what I'll are the re- get you some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what are the requirements for that, then, like when it comes to dating? Is that like a first date, I'm going to get you a Chanel bag? Ooh. Or is that after you've already? It's just w- what I feel like doing for the day. You don't even got to, I don't even really got to be messing with you for real. You know, you don't got to be my girlfriend or anything. If I feel like if I go to the mall and I feel like you, I want you to have this. I get it for you. Like even if she's not with you, like you would just go yeah, buy it and be like, like, "Here's a gift." I bought my homegirl stuff. Like, what's the most expensive item you bought a woman? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't buy chains, purses, cars. <laughs> cars. <laughs> <laughs> you took it too far. Sheesh. <laughs> I got to move to Detroit. <laughs> a car that is in that her name normal. with her. That's not normal. Buying we a girl car Indian is not normal. If I ain't about to give you a car in my name, <laughs> I'd rather you fuck up your name. Uh, okay, what if she has a man, right? What if the woman has a man? I don't really be paying attention to mm-hmm. people's personal lives. If I like you, I like you. <laughs> this is insane. Leave your man at home just don't rig around me. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so funny. <laughs> All right, now let's get into the business, though. So you and T Grizzly also did a joint album, mm-hmm. right? What did that do, you know, for both of you? Like, because it did pretty well, mm-hmm. and people enjoyed it. But you're newer mm-hmm. than he is. So what did that do for you? I think that, like, T helped me introduce myself to, to the industry, like, in some sort. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of his friends and industry friends, I got a lot of, built a lot of connections and relationships. And then for him, I just feel like he just came back outside and, like, motivated him to be back a rapper, like, rapping again. Yeah, because he was making a lot of money off of um, Twitch and Mm -hmm. and streaming. Yeah, still Mm -hmm. is. And so, in a way, he probably was like, I don't even got to do this if I don't feel like it, you know. Mm -hmm. But he did do really well with his robbery. um, What was it called? The The Trenches? From The Trenches? Yeah. Yeah. He just dropped uh, another one, Robbery 6. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he's doing good. So does this mean you're not going to do more movies since you didn't have such a great experience being on set? Uh, I might. I don't know. It's just be like I got to mentally put myself in that mindset. Like, I just wasn't in the mind frame. Like, I didn't, <laughs> you know, like you go into stuff and you think it's going to be easier than it is. You don't realize how many takes it is for, like, one scene to happen. And then at this point point like in time and life i just had a lot of stuff going on like i just wanted to be here and here and here and i get a phone call like it'd be some money on the floor or something and i'd just be like i can't even leave oh because you're i left i left the set early like i I know they were disappointed Mm -hmm. i left the set so many days early just middle of takes just leaving i know they were mad you can't just leave in the middle of a take. What is? I ain't know though. Okay. I never shot a movie. Now he knows. Now, now he That's knows. That's why he's he's but second you know guessing if he'll do it to again. Because you work very hard, mm-hmm. right? You've been putting out a ton of music. You've been doing a ton of videos. That's not an easy situation. It is though. 
you put out a lot of content. You come to work every day. It's easy for you. It's like. I ain't gonna lie, it's hard. <laughs> but it's you not make easy. it look easy though. Like, yeah, but that's that, when you're good. You make it look easy. That's when you're good. Yeah. You make it look easy. Cause honestly, every single day to get ready for this show, like there's about 30 stories we gotta go through. I'm doing that the night before. I'm doing that in the morning as soon as I get up. Then when I get here afterwards, we're doing interviews. So it really is like a It's hard work, but you you know how to do it. It's like yeah. muscle memory. So you say music is easy for you because you know how to do it. It's muscle like, memory for you? Yeah. I just feel like like if I go to the studio and I hear a certain beat or a certain BPM, I'm gonna rap like this on it. Or mm-hmm. I I don't choose beats like if I if I got a beat, I damn near know what I want to say on it. So it just be like if I don't if I, the first five minutes of me listening to this beat, I don't know what I want to say, then I'm probably not gonna use it. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a good way. It's your instinct mm-hmm. that you're trusting, and certain things you're drawn to more than others. Can you tell when a song is a hit for you too? Like certain songs that you put out, people have gravitated toward. Can you tell like this is this is gonna be the one? Yeah, I'd be studying like target audience, mm-hmm. so I know if I put out like for instance, Bay. I know the girls gonna be TikToking to it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's That's not a my fact. favorite they song. They get their hair done. They get their nails. They get the bust down because he's talking about getting the bust down middle part, side part. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. So you you study the 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 demo for the right song. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I be like having certain target audience. I be targeting. I be. I felt like early on in my career, like like last year and like years previous, I'm just all street. Like everybody know me for street music, mm-hmm. so this year I just wanted to dedicate something to like my women audience. Like right, that makes sense. That's smart, and, and they are eating it right up. <laughs> I have to say, one of my favorite episodes of Lip Service was when you and Sada Baby came <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> when y'all asked all them crazy questions, that was that was early on for you too. Mm-hmm. Would you go? Would you go back and do Lip Service again? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Those not- are my favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, we honestly, and then he uses that studio sometimes too. So okay, I think that was a good thing. Now, also in the song um, "Icky Vicky Vibes," you said that uh, women want to meet your mom, mm-hmm. right? Because is that really true? Like, ladies be like, "Can I meet your mom?" Yeah. Is your mom down to meet these? These my mama don't like me. No people. She okay. ain't really like that, but she be nice to everybody. Okay. But it ain't really her. She not. She not a people person. Or she don't like the women no, that you. My mom just on a. I want to meet one girl. She wants you to settle down. Uh, she want like one girl. I don't want to be talking to all these different girls. I don't, that's, it's a, confusing. that's fair. Yeah. You know, now I got to lie for you. Has your mom ever lied for you? No, I don't put her in that position. You I, you know, <laughs> I control all my situations. I no, that's right. <laughs> uh, so um, you've never been in a serious relationship or you've just never been in love? I never been in love. I've been in a relationship before. I've been in one relationship. Okay, but you weren't in love. Not in love. But you loved I her. Loved her. Okay. I didn't. I thought I was in love. Okay. What happened? I'm a cheater. I'm a. That's very honest. I'm a cheater. <laughs> that's what happened. I'm a cheater. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, you are still young. What are you now? Twenty four. Twenty five. Twenty five years old. You know, fair. Yeah, fair. I don't think I've dated a guy when I was that young that didn't cheat. Yeah. Did y'all cheat? Yeah. I've cheated before. Mm-hmm. But I think women cheat for different reasons. I think normally a woman isn't going to initiate it. Like, when I cheated, it was because I knew he was cheating. How and do you know he was cheating? Because I called him. He called me by accident, and I heard him talking to the girl, and then he would just lie about it. And I also feel like it's disrespectful when you're caught to lie. He probably was just playing. Stop it. Skilly, you don't even know him Stop, or the situation. Just, you know how guys, they just how are you just covering for this man that he's never met a day in his life? That's <laughs> how a guy is. Boy bashing. See now how <laughs> boy bashing. I'm, I'm just telling you the situation. I'm not bashing him. I'm telling you what happened. I don't feel like he did. That. Oh my gosh. <laughs> how does T Grizzly's wife allow him to hang out with you? What you mean? <laughs> I'm a great guy. I went to their wedding. You're just a cheater, though. <laughs> you know, that's what you said. That's my personal life, though. I ain't motivate my homeboys to cheat. <laughs> right. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. cover for someone you don't even know. I didn't cover for him. <laughs> you didn't catch him. I did. You heard something he said. He well, probably he, was I playing. also, um, he left his email open on my laptop. So I saw pictures of him in a hot tub with another girl. And then I saw a flight for a trip that he took with a girl from his job. And when he lied to me and told me he was going with his boys. Now, was that a lie? It was a work trip. And that was a photo shoot. He didn't work with her. (laughs) And it was a Photoshop, you said? It was a Photoshop. Have you you ever got caught cheating? Hell yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> but he's only had one relationship, so it doesn't matter. Is it only one relationship that you claim, or are there women out there that would be like, yeah, that's my boyfriend? No. Uh-uh. <laughs> I make this specifically clear. <laughs> For sure. i only been in one relationship. And you asked her to be a girl, or how did that happen? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. I asked her to be my girlfriend in jail. I was in jail. We know how that goes. Oh, yeah, that, is, that, is no, that, is, that usually doesn't work out. Yeah, you know how that goes. Was that the only girl you were talking to while you were locked up or just the main one? No, that was the only girl. This is my first time getting locked up, so I was like, I just was delusional. Mm-hmm. I was delusional. Would you tell women, no, he's not going to be honest. He's Forget it. I'm not what even going to ask you. What? Um, if they met a guy while he was in jail, if they should believe him, if he's like, I want to be with you forever, just you, like you're the one. He, he shouldn't believe her if she said that either. Okay, but she was she didn't cheat on you. I don't know that. Okay. I, know I that. was in jail. I know that for a fact. We know she didn't. We know Since her. Since you know so I much. I expect a woman to cheat. If, <laughs> if, if I go to jail, I expect somebody to cheat. <laughs> now, I want to go back to all the music that you, you put out, because like you said, it's easy for you. This is something that's kind of like muscle memory. So what's the most songs you've ever done in one day? Like 10. Oh, probably wow. like 10, 20. That's a lot. I feel like, that's like a lot. probably like no, me, Sada, and G Herbo did like twenty songs in a day, like mm-hmm. what we just had later. But like by myself, like ten, twelve. Mm-hmm. But I don't try to do that no more. I be trying to like be more quantity than wait, quality than quantity. Right. And um, you have a lot of people that have been working with you lately. I saw when you did the the album and you had the bonus songs put on, you got a lot of guest appearances on there. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like um, now a lot of people are lining up to work with you? And what was it like before that? Were people, like, you reached out? Did people curb you? Or were people always open to working with you? I don't really be reaching out to people because I be feeling like if it's going to happen, it happen organically. Mm-hmm. So. I ain't really, like, had too many people carry me because I never asked. I'm not uh, really that type of person. But when I meet people, we always... It's easier now, of course. Like, I be getting some of my dream features now, so I just be like... Like, Meek Mill, I got a song with Meek Mill. That was probably my favorite feature. That was my favorite artist, like Lil Wayne and Meek growing up, so... How did that happen? Um, How did that happen? I've, I was in Philly at Gilly Fest. I performed at Gilly Fest, and then Meek was there. And then Meek walked up on me just out of nowhere, like, Skill, I mess with you too. Mm-hmm. Like, he was talking to everybody else, and like, Skill, I mess with you. But I was already um, doing something with this artist, Young Row. So then mm-hmm. it was just like, we don't even like Meek. Me and Meek don't even talk about music for real. We talk about all type of funny other stuff, like, dog cool. Like, he cool for real. Does he give you advice? Yeah, like, he be giving me advice. When I see him and talk to him, he be giving all type of advice. Like, But Meek, like, Meek funny. Like, he's still a young guy to be. Like, <laughs> like he got a, he, like, got an old soul, but he still relate to the young guy. So it's be like, <laughs> Meek, Meek, like, got the best of both worlds for real. Like, I saw you know. somebody with him for Halloween. They had the french fries on their lap. On the, on the lap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They were like, I'm Meek Mill for Halloween. What's your favorite Meek song? Uh, my f- favorite Meek song growing up was Ball to the Max. But then uh, 1942 Flows, probably my uh, favorite. He got all type of stuff. Mm-hmm. He got all type of stuff. Because I like his melodic stuff, too. Mm. I remember when Cash Doll was opening for him on tour. Uh-huh. I went to go see them in New York, which is big. Like, I, what what is great about Meek is that he definitely is always paying attention to, mm-hmm. like, the, the newer artists that are coming after him. I actually told Meek, like, when I met him, like, man, I ain't really been feeling what you've been putting out. Mm-hmm. And he explained the whole rundown, like, why he been putting certain stuff out. And he played me a bunch of music, and I was like, damn. Meek, my favorite rapper again. <laughs> the world just don't know what this man got in his phone. Oh, well, I'm excited to hear it. Me too. In yeah. that case. And the mere fact you could be honest with him like that. Yeah, Y'all some do... people get very sad. They never talk to you You again. hurt my feelings. I'm like, <laughs> no, oh my I think he's messed with me more because I said it like. Yeah, you were honest. Yeah. yeah. People need that around them. Yeah, for sure. Has anybody ever told you that? Yeah, like, I be wanting people to tell me that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't want, because I don't want to embarrass myself, like, thinking it's that. Mm-hmm. So I be unapologetically like myself around my friends and my family and tell them what I need to tell them so they'll be the same way with me. I don't I don't want you to feel like I'm better than you so or nothing like that or you can't tell me. No, I'd rather you tell me. 
Right. At the end of the day, this is my craft, so mm-hmm. I don't really, you just do that. Now, another thing that you did that went viral was you pieced things up with Sada Baby and T Grizzly. And T Grizzly was up here yesterday, by the way, talking about it as well. Mm -hmm. So what made you decide that was something that you needed to do? And how did that even happen? Because did you feel weird, you know, even having conversations with T Grizzly, knowing that they had issues with each other? No, because I I didn't I didn't feel like their issue was that big. Like to the outside world, people be thinking this, this and that. But a lot of stuff don't even be that. And it's like it's three four sides to stories Mm -hmm. and then a lot of stuff be people be trying to people around people be trying to just be messy it'll be a a person that you ain't even gangster you want to see some gangster stuff go on like for what these these two grown men want making money Mm -hmm. why why can't they make some money together you see they right now they on the game every day together he's showed of how to make money on the game, That's all a type deal. of stuff. And they really, to me, they just, they wanted to be around each other. Like, I'm talking to them both, so I already knew. So mm-hmm. it wasn't really hard. I didn't right. even tell them to do that. I told them I was going to put them in the same room. And then when I put them in the same room, I left. I didn't even say nothing to them. They grown men. And that's what I think the world lack right now. People don't know how to hold conversations. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of stuff could be nipped in the bud with a conversation, but people we just, I don't know. It'd be like all the outside people around. That's true. And it also be social media. Sometimes social media and one person says this and then the fan chimes in like, oh, this person don't mess with this person. They don't like you. Right. And they take shots at you and mm-hmm. then you start believing that. And then people be like, certain people be just uh, responding to clickbait or anything like that or a certain interviewer asked them a question. Now they feel like they got to be tough about it and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I be knowing these guys like personally, mm-hmm. like not to rap them. Like I know them personally and these good individuals, like right. they good men. Like the world might think you like, yeah, people be gangster in the streets and stuff. But my friends, as my friends, I know they good men though. Like great individuals care about people, love mm-hmm. and like. And that's the side I be wanting them to show each other, at least mm. you know, well, not your rap persona. Like when right, it comes to taking care of business and right is right and wrong is wrong, just, you know. That's very mature of you. Oh, yeah. I just be wanting to see everybody be great, like, you know. Do you feel like Detroit is very united when it comes to music? Because everybody is looking at Detroit right now as far as mm-hmm. the music scene. There's a lot of artists up and coming from Detroit, a lot of established artists now, too. Do you feel like there's a, a unity? It's a unity of so, so like some sort. Like mm-hmm. everybody got their um, friends in it, and everybody like. But I think everybody doing good. So I think everybody um, got this common ground that we on. Like we all just get the money. Like, but I think a lot of us be going to Atlanta, seeing how they move and stuff. So it be like a lot of stuff. Like it's in every city and stuff that be going on and stuff. But we we want to get the money more than anything everybody right. came from these circumstances that was like where you you just so happy that you made it out of it you would just be like lead a bs alone mm-hmm. for real. um now back to your situation with with women mm-hmm. all right are you when do you see yourself like at what age do you think you'll settle down do you have an age in mind because sometimes people say it's the timing more than the person you know they'll say you could find the right person but at the wrong time I see myself settling down. I don't know when. Like, mm-hmm. whenever that person come around that I want to settle down with, I'm going to settle down. But you can see it happening. You yeah. do eventually want that. You're not, like... Yeah. Can you not cheat? Can I not cheat? Yeah, I can not cheat. Could you be with just one woman? for the, Like, you think when you settle down, that'll be it? You'll never be with it? Could you see that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't live by society norms, though. Oh, so what's the norms you want to live by? Whatever we agree to. Okay. <laughs> like, I think it's whatever you agree to, not okay. what... The, somebody said the rule book was right. Mm-hmm. So if you mess with a young lady and she's talking to other guys, you're okay with that. If you guys aren't locked in, if we agree to that, like, even would you? If we was locked in, you don't, you don't know. Like, certain people be with certain people for happiness. You might make me happy in a different, whole different way. Mm-hmm. Like, we might be locked in, but you like other guys, but you still make me happy. Are you a jealous person? No, don't sound like it. Unless I I, I'm jealous if I really like. If if that's how we is though, like you got different relationships with 
different people. Like even with my friends, like I got different relationships with some of my friends. Mm-hmm. Some of my homeboys, we talk about each other, crack jokes, low blow. It's all love. But some people, it, you can't do it. So. Some people are way too sensitive for yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> so it'd be like it's all based on the person. Yeah. Uh, and what about entrepreneurial ventures outside of music? What are some other things that you're interested in doing? Because I know we all about getting to the money, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm doing the housing development stuff now. Like, I'm uh, partnering with the city and, like, other people from different cities. We're about to develop a bunch of houses starting in the Detroit area. Oh, that's great. We like that. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm about to, uh, fans, but really about to help me get some rappers to help, um, get on to it, so. Oh. We're about to get all our rapper friends and develop houses in Detroit and try to build the community. We like what part? Um, or is we're probably it gonna over? start with um Baby Money neighborhood first, mm-hmm. and over there in the Herman Hir- Kiefer district. But I met this one guy. He from out here too. Is Ryan Castellano. He mm-hmm. he <clears throat> owned a bunch of houses, but he got a deadline on when you gotta develop them. So I'm gonna get a bunch of my friends and stuff and just. We're going to all buy, like, blocks, like, four houses at a time on a block, and then we're going to develop them, get, like, four or five more. Nice. I like that, really, mm-hmm. and it does beneficial things for the community. Because Detroit is is really, like, you can see such a big difference. Every time I come, it's, like, more and more stuff, more restaurants opening, more businesses opening. Mm-hmm. You can see the development happening there. But it's also important to make sure that people have housing that's available to them and they're not getting pushed out, you mm-hmm. know, so... All right. Well, listen, we appreciate you so much for coming through, Skiller Baby. We miss you on lip service, too. I'm coming back. Mm-hmm. All right. I feel like you got a lot more to say when it comes to, to that. Uh-oh. <laughs> we ready for you. Um, and as far as any other plans, like tour, what what are you doing with that? I'm actually, I'm working on a few tours. Mm-hmm. I um, me and Rob for now working on a tour. Then I'm working on my own tour, so. I can see you and Rap 49 doing a project together. Mm-hmm. Is that something you guys are talking about? Cause, yeah, we okay. got a bunch of music. Right. We just and we signed to the same label, so it's um it'll be easy to get done. It's just about putting us in the same place. He be busy and I be busy. Like he crazy booked right now and I be super booked too. So it'd be like we just we always meet up in Atlanta somehow. And then mm-hmm. we just knock a couple songs out or something, or a song or two. Don't it feel good? I feel like it happened for you a lot faster than it happened for for other people too. Yeah. Don't it feel crazy? Especially like especially where we, I'm from, like Detroit, it happened for me a lot faster for sure. Mhm. All right. Well, Skilla Baby, make sure y'all check them out. It's way up with Angela Yee.